What a Catch, Part 29, A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction. If you have not heard the previous 28 parts of the story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and comment below in support of more fan fiction. Adrian hesitated a moment as he raised his hand to knock. If he had his ring, he would transform and jump in through the balcony to give Marinette the invitation. But his finger was barren, exposing flesh that hadn't seen daylight in over a decade. Her mother answered the door, and his face grew hot as he realized he had kissed this woman's daughter only a few hours before. Hello, Mrs. Chang. Is Marinette around? he asked, peeking into the living room. Adrian, it's been so long. Please, do come in. Marinette is upstairs in her room. I'll go get her. Sabine smiled, gesturing him to take a seat on the sofa. He gratefully obliged and found the cushions pleasant for his legs, sore from the lack of sleep. Yeah, Mom? Adrian heard Marinette say as she tumbled down the stairs and into the kitchen. He glanced to get a better look at her and froze, confused at her appearance. She was in the same black shorts and white t-shirt as last night, but her hair was... orange. She bleached it. Was she going to add in more color? Or was she planning on leaving it as is? Adrian's in the living room. What?! She spun around to see him on the couch. Adrian! Um, hi! Hey, he said, waving at her from across the room. Your hair, it's... My hair? Marinette furrowed her eyebrows and reached up to pull it out of the bun. A look of shock and terror crossed her face as the strands tumbled in front of her as though she didn't know that her hair had changed colors overnight. This... this is... Adrian watched as she frantically looked around for something to hide herself in, settling on a gray blanket draped across the back of the couch and wrapping it around herself like a child gearing up for Saturday morning cartoons. It acted like a hood as it modestly hid her arms from him her pale legs accented by the fabric as it draped down her side. She looked like she was ready for a movie and pillow fort, if not for the embarrassed look she wore. Hey, kid, he laughed, standing up and walking over to her. You've got a little bit of a punk rock look going on. Own up to it. He reached out and placed his hands on the side of her face as he stepped closer slowly moving the makeshift hood back until it fell, revealing the fire-colored hair as her eyes grew wide, and Adrian realized they were within kissing distance of each other. He smiled as she looked up at him like Bambi and gently pressed his lips to her forehead, watching Sabine smile to herself out of the corner of his eye. I don't know. It was dumb. Okay, but think of all the little girls who will run up to you on the street and ask to touch your hair. His comment made her break into a smile for the first time that morning. What are you doing here? She managed to say, tightening the blanket's grip around her body. I wanted to know if you'd like to get lunch somewhere. Me? I would. She touched her hair her newly lit smile disappearing as her face clouded in embarrassment. Well, um... Don't worry about it. Throw on some jeans and we'll be twenty-something rebels. I don't know, Adrian. I... I should fix it. Hey, you need to go out to buy more dye anyway, right? Come on, Marinette. What do you say? Will you join me? I... He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair, thinking about his next move. She needed a confidence boost, but what could he do to help her? As he looked at her fire-colored hair, 
Adrian had an idea. I'll be back in like five minutes, he said. Go get dressed. I'll see you soon. With that, he left, running to the convenience store down the block. He wasn't sure if this was going to work, but he may as well try. He felt a little silly as he looked down at the contents of his basket, but the cashier was just another stranger he would never see again. Besides, Marinette had done so much for him over the years. It was the least he could do. Marinette, he called out, opening the door to her home without so much as a knock. Will you come outside with me? She peeked out from the kitchen. Her hair returned to her high bun and shorts replaced by some light pink jeans. What are you... she began, staring at the bag in his hand. Here! He threw a spray bottle at her and pulled out one for himself, running to the sink and spraying his hair as he heard Marinette gasp. Well, what do you think? This... Purple hairspray? You wanted to do something crazy, right? This'll wash out. So take a mental health day and go crazy, Marinette. How did you know? She asked, a smile cracking through her stone face. That you wanted to do something crazy? Please. I've worked in fashion long enough to recognize a failed attempt for blonde hair. From what I hear, most girls do it themselves when they're frustrated and need a quick change. Yeah. So give yourself some highlights and let's get out of here, he laughed, glancing down at his own bottle of hairspray. He had gotten green for himself and was sure his hair looked like a Green Bay Packers fan. New York had certainly helped him develop a taste for American football. She hesitated looking at the can like it was a foreign object. He waltzed over and took it from her, shaking it as he removed the cap. Wait, are you... Marinette began. Cover your face, Adrian said, spinning her around and spraying the nape of her neck before reaching up and unclipping her hair, letting it tumble loosely down her back. Soon enough, she had a soft coating of lavender at the tips of her hair an ombre effect against the orange that made it look purposeful instead of silly and uneducated. Is it okay for now? she asked, turning to face him. See for yourself! He pulled out his phone as he drew her close for a selfie. Smile, he whispered in her ear, feeling a sense of intimacy as they stared into the screen. A few moments later, he had an endearing photo of the two of them, crazy hair and all, stored safely on his phone as Marinette gawked at it, trying to decide if it was suitable for her to wear out. Okay, she finally said, but nowhere fancy. Adrian's smile grew into a Cheshire Cat grin as he took her by the hand and led her to the door stopping to say goodbye to Sabine as Marinette put her shoes on. Today was going to be a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Part 30 will be available shortly. In the meantime, you can check out the videos below for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.